Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. I am so thrilled to be bringing you one of my absolutely favorite people in the adult industry. She is my duet partner on our latest hit song, Sucking Dicks, as you may have seen in our episode filmed live at the AVN show just last month. And uh, she is your favorite award-winning MILF and Browser's contract star, the one and only Alexis Fox. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> you know what's so funny is that that little video of us, like, you know, we started singing, sucking dicks before. Yeah. Um, <laughs> someone commented that, like, I had a good singing voice, which is hilarious because I have a terrible singing voice. It's like the one thing that I'm actually kind of embarrassed about. <laughs> Something you don't do in front of others. No, I don't do karaoke. <laughs> but except for now, my daughter insists that I sing her um, the song from Sleeping Beauty all the Aww. time. So she calls it Princess Booty. <laughs> like, Mommy, <laughs> sing Princess Booty. I love it. And she makes me sing it like several times before she'll go to bed. And so I'm like, and I try to like not sound terrible. And I know my husband's like on the other side of the wall going like, just like cringing, putting things in his ears. Yeah, but I mean, she she loves it, so that's all that matters. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's improving. Maybe you know. Maybe maybe we have a shot here. Maybe we. Should. I think we should record that. You I know, think put, we you should know, put it on some vinyl. Oh my god! What if we actually did that? I think it'd be great if we actually like wrote a song called "Sucking Dicks" and like yeah. did. I feel like it would be a hit. I think so too. It doesn't I, matter I mean, that it's I have a terrible hit everywhere. voice. <laughs> Can I just auto tune it anyways and sound like Little John and Little Absolutely. Fine? Absolutely, they have everything for that. <laughs> I dated someone a long, long time ago that's in the music industry, and after I saw how like they put her voice together and everything like that, I was like, "Oh my god! Is like anything, you could be anybody. Is anything real anymore? <laughs> like, nothing. I know. It's scary. It is scary. <laughs> oh my god. So as mentioned, we got to briefly chat at the AVN show. Um, and then before that, the last time we spoke was actually, we did a live interview during quarantine. Do you remember that? Oh yeah, I do. Yeah, I just did I do. it. Yeah. We were all stuck at home. So I was like, I'm going to do the, I called them quarantine chats. Just do a bunch of like live interviews with people. But that's the long, last time we've had like a long form interview. That is true. That seems like forever ago. It, it right? <laughs> Weirdly enough. You know, what's so crazy is I was thinking this the other day. Have you started, um, I watched a movie. Have you seen Pearl? No. Okay, so it's like a it's a, a, a origin story from a pre, another movie called X. It's it's really good, but anyways, it's mm -hmm. actually set in the time of the that first pandemic that like nobody oh, wow. knew existed until this one came around. It was like in the late early 1900s, I oh, think. Wow. It was like the Spanish okay. flu. I'm, I probably have the dates wrong, but it was it was a long time ago. So there's people wearing masks and stuff like that. And I was just thinking to myself, watching this, going, Jesus Christ, we literally just had a pandemic like two years ago. And I remember yeah. thinking, when is life going to get back to normal? When are we going to be going able to go around without masks on? And I like couldn't wait for that day. And now that we're at that day, it feels so crazy that that ever happened. Yeah. It feels like a blurb. Yeah. <laughs> like just some kind of weird whoop yeah. in the in our in programming in some sort. So. Yeah. But yeah. COVID changed people's lives drastically in so many ways. You know, a lot of people shifted careers um, or literally just, you know, changed the way that they looked at life. How did how did that whole period affect you? Do you feel like it changed you in any way? Um, I think it changed a lot of my external living. Mm -hmm. um, it gave me time to kind of sit back and really look at everything. Mm -hmm. Where before, you know, you're all... Well, even currently now, you're on the go, you're on the go, you're on the go, and you kind of really have to learn to stop. Okay, what's all going on here? Uh, what do I need in my life? Why don't why don't I need in my life? Who places things? Yeah. All those things, and it kind of gave me an opportunity to really weed out what I needed to weed out. Mm -hmm. um, it was a great. Um, opportunity for expansion for me. Um, I was able to really set forth some goals and really just kind of nipped away at them and mm -hmm. crushed them as I went. Mm -hmm. um, really just kind of cleared the way. It's like, it was good for me in yeah. that perspective. Um, and it also like what what what's really important to me what yeah. do I what, you know what my priorities are yeah and what I valued as far as like gosh just you know nature just be able to go out in nature you mm -hmm. know and, and 
uh, hike and, and also creating more balance in my life yeah. was really important. Yeah. But yeah, maybe that, an opportunity to set structure for that. Yeah, that balance thing is, is so hard, right? And I feel like that's something that we're always trying to find. Yeah, I think it's always ever changing. It's going to yeah. be an ebb and flow. I mean, I think that's how life is. It's like our breath. It's in it, we inhale and we exhale. We have moments in our life where we have huge expansions. Like I feel I went through a huge expansion expansion of the last few years and I can feel myself withdrawing within and saying, "Okay, where am I going to go now and where do I want to reevaluate myself?" Mm -hmm. So, with that ebb and flow, I think that's just normal. I think like we just got to learn to flow that. Yeah. Flow but it, it sounds like you're comfortable with like the ebb. You I know? am. The, the, okay, you have the expansion and then you have the pause. I feel that at least for myself, and I, I do feel that society pushes this idea as well that you have to constantly be hustling, constantly growing. Like there's, if, the, if there's a moment of pause or, you know, a break that you're you're failing or you're getting behind. Oh yeah, look at our numbers on Instagram and all the crap. Like, oh, your account only reached this much. Well, oh, yeah. what, because I didn't post every day. Like, yeah, I yeah, don't really yeah. care. That's <laughs> true. That is I so don't true. because what it ha what, you know, what's more important to me than anything else is my internal happiness mm -hmm. and and making sure that I'm present with those people that are most important in my life, including myself. And giving myself that. So if I don't post for a couple of days, I don't care. Let, let, let the al algorithm throw me on the bottom. They're like, whatever. Yeah. Like, it will bounce back up. And then I'll, like, have my moments where I feel, like, really creative. And I'll be, like, on my thing for a while. But I really try not to because I look at myself more as an artist. And I don't think, like, real art is just created, like, nonstop. We mm -hmm. don't just, like, shove that out of our veins left and right. We might have moments and periods where the creativity just might f uh, flow for us. But I just don't, I think that, I think we've been sold this idea that we have to constantly create and I just, I just don't buy into it. Yeah. You know, I think it like, everybody was like, oh, what's your next calendar going to be? Da, 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 da. Cause I did this grandiose, you know, 20, I, like I, it was a passion project. It was mm -hmm. something I wanted to do. And I was like, I didn't do one. <laughs> I, <laughs> I didn't feel like it. You know, I was, I was, <laughs> I was talking to Angela White about this actually. And she was like expressing the frustration around how, you know, she's she's come out, she's done something big, spectacular, whatever. She does like a media tour, she discusses it. And then people are like, So what's next? It's like, yeah, dude, I just I just made this thing. I just did this the big thing. I put all this work into it. Like, can we not just enjoy what I just Yeah, can we but, can we revel in it a little yeah, bit? Like I wanna splash around, <laughs> marinate, like let me have it for a moment. Yeah, and because then it makes like that it makes accomplishing that almost not worth anything. Yeah. If you can't like it's, enjoy it's that what, instant gratification almost. Yeah. I mean when people are living through their phones and not actually through their eyeballs anymore. God, that's so true. That's so true. <laughs> and it's like and and I get frustrated with myself about that because I'll set this goal forth and I will work hard to achieve it and I'll achieve it and then when I achieve it I'll be like, eh, what's next? I'll tell myself that. And it's like, yeah. well, can't, why can't you just like pat yourself on the back and like, wow. appreciate where you got to? And it, it reminds me of that saying, you know, like it's the journey, not the destination. Mm -hmm. And it's true because whenever I hit that destination, I'm like, eh. Yeah. doesn't like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like I was convinced that once I got to this point that everything, that would be like my pinnacle and everything would be fall into place and I'd be so happy with that. Yeah. And that would be the completion I was looking for. And it never is. I, yeah. I think those are also like little steps along our way. You know what I mean? And like that isn't a, that it's never going to be completed. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, maybe at death or it will be completed in some way or at some aspect. Yeah, I mean, that the, goes. we're forced to wrap it up, right? Like, <laughs> I guess. It's just like God's like, your time is up, You know man. what? You've had plenty of time here. <laughs> if you haven't caught it now, we're cutting it off. Like, sorry, lady. <laughs> but we do have to stop and take a moment and really do congratulate, congratulate yourself. Like, mm -hmm. I noticed when I just bought um, my house recently, it's my first home. Mm -hmm. It was a big deal for me. And um, I had to like literally take a moment, and I I still sit like I'll just sit around. And I'm looking. I'm like like yesterday I was in my jacuzzi. And I'm like oh my god, this is mine. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt like what how I know where I'm on the right path, and it feels good. And like those moments, it's because I feel like in like this little tickle, like almost like my my heart is tickling around mm -hmm. the entire structure of it. My mm -hmm. lungs feel tickly. I don't know how to describe it. I feel like I'm being tickled from the inside out. <laughs> and it really, I think I just, 
I think that's what pure, I think that's what pure joy is. And so when you reach those times of pure joy, maybe that's, you know, that's those excitement moments. Right. Maybe it's not just going to be like this big wow party, but like yeah. notice yourself, like get those little, start taking moment, uh, being more aware of those moments that you just feel that tickle on the inside. Yeah. And those little sweet moments of joy is. And I'm actually be tries. present in those moments. Yeah. Right. And that's where, that, and that's where I think you're going to feel the tickle. Yeah. Is being that present. Yeah, I find that that's another thing that I struggle with. And I remember I was reading, um, is it Emmett Fox? Um, why am I, I feel like I completely just butchered his name. He wrote, oh, someone kill me. <laughs> Which book? I'm fucking Googling this shit because now, now it's going to drive me crazy. <laughs> He's I like, murdered one of my favorite authors the other day, and I was like, I was, I was like, oh my god, I just murdered this guy's name. I, I know. Him all. I, I follow him. This, okay, yes, it is Emmett Fox, The Sermon on the Mound. Oh, okay, I've heard of that, but yeah, I haven't. so it's it's a really great book, um, and this is the one I'm talking about, right? Because he's written a fucking fuck ton of these. I'm pretty sure this is the book. Anyways, my point is, is that he talks a lot about being present, and one of the things that really struck me is that he talks about going to like this beautiful meadow. He went on a hike with a friend. They like made it to this beautiful meadow that they traveled all this way to go see or something like that. And she's looking at it and she says, God, this is so gorgeous. I can't wait to come here again. And he was talking about how like even in that moment, she's not in the present. She's already in the future. She's of, already like, thinking about like I'm when I'm going to come back. It's like, yeah. but you're here right now. Yeah. Why are you thinking about like why did you already leave the place yeah exactly. <laughs> why, exactly. why are we planning our next trip here already exactly. when you haven't even like you know and i think that, explored this i think that all the time like all of these the you know i mean really like the other day i was i was trying to i always try to um work on gratitude and, and appreciating what i have mm -hmm. rather than wanting something more because i'm always in that that mode of like wanting the next thing and i was like i have like this great life when you come to think about it like I have a husband that I love I have like a daughter that I love I have like a career that I love I have friends and family and all this kind of stuff and you know this is like everything that I probably would have dreamed of if I could have looked at where I'm at right now like 20 years ago I would have been like oh my god that's it so why can't I be present in these moments and enjoy these moments that I dreamt about my whole life yeah you're gonna have to do some meditation on that I was gonna say what <laughs> Can't you just give me an instant gratification answer? That's what you hear. Uh, Fix me, Alexis. <laughs> it's, it, you know, I think it will, A, you're becoming more self-aware that you're not, be, maybe not being present in those moments. I, I you know what, honestly, I'm going to recommend just really diving into some more boxing. Mm. Boxing is a great practice of staying present in the moment because once you take your mind off of what, like your, your breath work and all of a sudden everything's in the flow and you're like, oh, I could think something else, you're getting hit. Yeah. So just think about and like what I like what I like to do is in those moments I'm trying to train my brain like this is this is what being present's like this is what mm -hmm. being present's like so that I can just continue to be there and my yeah. brain will automatically go into that that mode does that make sense yeah, just, no, you're exercising totally. your brain just as much as you exercise your muscles yeah so you're training yourself to be present in those moments and yeah. when you feel yourself picking up the phone or putting it down or if you have an event hire a photographer and that way you put your phone away i've learned to just not have my phone at events anymore and just rely on other people to do those things you know that's such a good point about events because so many times i have tried to just do everything myself to save money and this, this is actually very sad but I put on my father's funeral last month and I like I was like I'm not going to do anything like mm -hmm. I just want to like be able to celebrate my dad's life I don't want to think about mm -hmm. shit I don't want to like so I hired a caterer Carla Lane did a great job shout out to Carla thank oh, you that's amazing. yeah so Carla came and catered it um you know got like an atv person who came in with the monitor and the sound system like just all of the things like someone handled parking so i didn't have to think about any of it and afterwards i was like i mean as as shitty as it was that like it was my father's funeral like a party that i never wanted to ha host it was Correct. literally like one of the best parties that i've ever planned <sighs> <laughs> maybe there's the lesson in that i know right but yeah, yeah the event and i and i was it's funny because when i was thinking about planning all this i thought event photographer but i was like it's a little weird to have an event photographer in a funeral so maybe not for this one maybe not for that one, <laughs> maybe the next I, get, one. I get why you might not want one That's there cool. i totally <laughs> respect that like, my dad died oh god <laughs> i just got a vision of what people would be doing <laughs> like it would be like a, just a constant me my my brain right now stop <laughs> 
not even. They shouldn't be laughing. Oh, I know. But I mean, like, you got to laugh, man. Because, like, how to. else can you deal with life? I laugh so much. I'm going to have my dimples worked on because the muscles are so tight. They just keep going in further in my face. I'm like, great. People are going to be hiking those soon. They'd be like, the little cliffhanger. <laughs> We did actually I do laugh a lot though. You do, you do. And that's and I, I mentioned this when we last spoke. I mean, you've like such an infectious, positive personality. You're such a pleasure to be around. Like everyone loves you. And um you mentioned that you very much embrace the light and the dark sides of you. And you know, we were at AVN, there was a lot of going on, didn't have time to delve into that. Could you maybe explain a little bit more what you mean by that? Yeah, I'm actually, I just got a new book I'm going to start reading, too. It's even called The Dyke's, uh, Dark Psychology of a Four-Year Better Life or something mm-hmm. like that. A friend of mine just recommended it to me. And, you know, like, I think a lot of people just think I just walk around always smiling and stuff like that. It's just, you know, it's your mindset on how you go through things. Mm-hmm. And know that, you know, you. it's kind of hard to put it also. I just do life. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to describe everything. But... You have to be comfortable with yourself, mm-hmm. just in and out. And that's a constant, like, uh, constant work for me. Mm-hmm. Like, I can always turn on a happy anytime. But it's also, it's nice to sit with myself when I'm sad. And it's yeah. okay to sit with myself and understand, like, why, what was the situation that made me angry? And, you know, why do, why do I feel that way? Mm-hmm. And I, I, I do sit in silence a lot. Yeah. And I highly recommend being alone and sitting in silence and really kind of figuring yourself out from the inside out. Yeah. Um, and know that you're all these things and that happiness and all these and the way that you are is always a choice. Mm-hmm. Everything's a, of direct balance. You have life. You have death. Without death, it would give life no meaning because people wouldn't give a shit what they do, right? Right. Um, if you didn't, if life, and then it's the same direct rebalance if life didn't exist and we all just were like, yeah, we wouldn't exist. Yeah. Um, it's just, you know, you're going to find your way through all that. And like in a pendulum on some, some moments, you're going to feel very light and airy into those moments. And that's great. And then it's okay to find, you know, yourself in a darker moment mm-hmm. and feel that sadness and feel yeah. the anger and understand, okay, this is what I feel right now and feel it that moment. And that also releases you from carrying that with you. Mm-hmm. Does that make God, sense? No, I can't even tell you how much that makes sense because I think one of my biggest issues, and this is why, you know, alcohol became such a big part of my life and such a problem for me is that I didn't want to feel those dark feelings. I only wanted yeah. to chase the happy all the time. And, you know, ultimately, like, a lot of us do. turns we out do. drinking 24-7 isn't good for you and ultimately <laughs> makes you fucking miserable. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Spoiler alert. It's actually an antidepressant. It's actually didn't, depressant. didn't work at yeah. all. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, now that I have a, several years of sobriety under my belt, those, those moments of having to feel my feelings as unfucking comfortable as they are. And believe me, I got a heavy dose of that when my dad died. Like, mm-hmm. so grateful to now, like, embrace that process. Yeah. Because the crying, you know, the, the allowing those feelings to be felt, to be acknowledged – is the only way that they're going to pass through you and continue on because you're right. You will. Otherwise, you carry them with you. You carry it with you. And that's what makes people sick. Yeah. You know, you keep, if you carry and harbor any of the, any emotion, yeah. you know, like good, extreme goodness and extreme sadness, it's all the same. Like yeah. it's all extremes, right? Yeah. Um, if you're going to carry that, just know you're going to carry that weight. You're going to probably make yourself sick. Mm-hmm. So it's best to, or for me, and I, again, I can only speak from my own personal journey, you know, everything like that, but. For me, it's better for me to go in as a warrior towards these things mm-hmm. and, and try to understand it to the best of my abilities and, and feel it and cry and scream and feel that gut-wrenching thing. Go out to the mountains, scream it out, <laughs> yeah. take a, a log, beat the tree, feel it. Yeah. You're alive. And yeah. how lucky are you to feel those feelings? Yeah. I mean, that's a blessing as it is. Yeah. So I'm, I have so much gratitude for those moments just yeah. as much. And sometimes those catastrophic kind of <sighs> unleashed moments are your catalyst into a better life and a better you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've definitely been trying to like harness that, like, okay, you know, what can I take away from my father's death? And, you know, I guess it would be like appreciation for life. Yeah, and transmutation, you know, transmutation is a really good way of taking, like, these situations that come into our lives that could really tear us apart and are traumatic. Mm -hmm. 
um, and transmute that into something beautiful. Yeah. And that's what I try to do with anything that comes my way. It's like, yeah. okay, I'm going to take this on. I'm going to recognize it. I'm going to hug it. I'm going to feel it the fuck out. And then I'm going to transmute that into some beautiful art. Or I'm going yeah. to, like, probably that's where my calendar came from. Because yeah. I was coming through something and I needed to express, you know, yeah. this feminine, divine, whatever I was feeling. You know, I, I did it more in a zodiac base, but I feel like we're all, we're all part of each other in some way. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I really highly recommend transmutation. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're so right. I mean, the greatest pieces of art, the greatest artists, um, those are all been born out of, like, pain and tragedy. Yeah. You know? It's like that's what drives creativity is, like, awful as that is. But I guess, you know, that's the spectrum, right? You have to feel the sad to appreciate I, I, the happy. And, then, yeah. and I think people also relate to – I mean, you know, some of the greatest movies of all time – are those movies that like have those heart wrenching moments where you I, really feel for them, right? But yeah. that's like the human condition. We all relate to that. I can, yeah, I can listen to a conversation and feel that. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? But I, I, I kind of think there's such a beauty into pain, and I think yeah. it's actually really beautiful when you can kind of really kind of feel it out, feel all the wrinkles of it out. Yeah. And I, I just, I don't know. I'm just very accepting of it. Was I always that way? No. I think I've just become that over time and probably just with certain practices in my life and mm-hmm. everything like that and really kind of accepted this is how it's going to go. This is yeah. how life is. Yeah. So true. So breathe. <sighs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to take a quick breather um, to hear from our sponsors and then we're going to be right back. With all the bad news about prices these days, it's nice to know that Adam and Eve is still offering the best deal out there. Adam and Eve is your one-stop shop for everything sexy. It's got toys, games, movies, and so much more. Whether you're single and looking to impress a new partner, or you're in a relationship and you need to spice up your sex life, Adam and Eve has what you need. They've been at the top of the adult retail chain for decades, and there's a reason for that. Now my listeners will get 50% off of any one item, and that's not all. You also get three bonus sexy items and six movies for free, plus free shipping. No matter what you choose from the privacy of your own home, you can rest assured that it will be shipped to you in discreet packaging. So go to adamandeve.com, select any one item at 50% off, plus enjoy three sexy gifts and free shipping with the code HOLLY. That's adamandeve.com and use code HOLLY. You have to use my code in order to get this special deal. All right, guys, we are back. So um, if you haven't picked up on it already, I lost my father last month. I've mentioned that many times. Sorry, I will eventually get off, like, the sad train, and we'll talk about dicks again one day, I promise. Um, But uh, it's made me think a lot about death and, like, Mm -hmm. our short time on this earth. I mean, to be fair, like, I thought a lot about death before that. I I mean, I don't know about you, but sometimes I lay awake at night and, like, ponder non-existence and, like, how, what is that and, like, how does that happen and, like, what's that like? If I, it's like nothing because it's non-existence. I just – so I'm just wondering, like, how – do you think about death? What do you think – what do you think happens to us after well, first, we die? Well, first, I think about it a lot. I'm probably talking about it a lot with my friends. I'm like, because I've already started to plan my my celebration of life. Like, Really? Oh, my God. I'm going to throw the best fucking party. <laughs> there will be no sadness, like no sad tears. Are you going to hire a photographer, an event oh, cool, photographer? Yeah, I'm share, like, <laughs> take a picture with me. <laughs> I'll be watching. Who knows? <laughs> you look like a fucking weekend at birdie situation. Totally. We'll just sit you up in a chair with like a hat. And oh. Oh my god, I would love it. Oh my god, I just want everybody to have a lot of fun, and I want everybody to laugh. Like I do think about it because I'm yeah. like, you know, I think about ways of like when I do, <clears throat> when I, whether it's passing on to another life or you know, or passing whatever we, mm-hmm. we leave this this physical here. I'm not going to put a boundaries on infinity. Okay, mm-hmm. so yeah, whatever that is. Um, I like I think about like when I leave here, how like how. How am I leaving my friends? Are they going to leave? You know, what what are they going to remember me as? And and I think that's important. I want them to laugh, you know, because I laugh a lot. I'm a really happy person. So don't come to my celebration life sad. <laughs> no sad tears. 
<laughs> but like, you know, um, I lived a good life. And, you know, um, I'm not saying like, woohoo, I'd be excited to go tomorrow. But yeah. like, I also understand that that is part of life. Mm-hmm. And so that makes, you know, living every single day, you know, to my, so to my fullest of whatever extent that is. And maybe mm-hmm. my fullest is laying around on the couch that day. Yeah. Totally and perfectly flow. fine. Um, to live, um, to live happy and make sure that, you know, I show gratitude for all those little things in my life, like having food in my fridge, waking up, taking my first breath, having my, pu- you know, my puppies near me, be able to work at home and spend that time with them. Mm-hmm. Like all those little things add up. Um, but yeah, I do think about it. And what happens after, man, it's just, I, you know, I'm pretty sure I have guardian angels. <laughs> I, you know, I'm sure we have like people that look, um, or just I think there's guides I think there's been guidance yeah in my life yeah you know what what that is I'm not exactly sure I'm not an expert in that field but yeah. um I, I I do talk to the universe all the time mm-hmm. I talk I'll even say God whether what what that means I don't know yeah um I think that can be hugely expansive you can mm-hmm. also look at you know God isn't in each of us that's a light mm-hmm. Uh, a light source Mm -hmm. um but you know i'm just like and what i say is just like really my affirmations and my gratitude Mm -hmm. i try to do that every single day yeah um that way when i I, there's no regrets yeah it's it's interesting because there is you know I, i think about you putting that light and love out and how people are attracted to that right so there is this energy that we create around ourselves and and it's interesting because you know, a lot of we, we talk about science and in, in the physical, and this kind of relates to that documentary that I mentioned to you mm-hmm. when we were emailing back and forth. I don't know if you got a chance to see it. I did. I caught a couple, a little, a little bit of it. Yeah. Did you watch the first episode? Or? I got the first episode. Okay. I'm on close to the end of the second episode. Okay. So, so sorry, guys. This documentary is called Life After Death, right? Surviving or, Death. Surviving Death. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, it's on Netflix. And uh, we watched the first episode, and I was pretty taken with it because I'm, I'm like a science person, though I, I also, like you, think that there's probably something else that we mm-hmm. don't understand. But I also want to hear um, – I want to hear ideas about that base in some kind of science, you know, yeah, like rooted in, like, the logical. That helps me digest it. And what I really liked about it is they had these professors and talking about consciousness and – you know, I'm basically talking about the limitations of science because we can only measure the physical and what happens when the physical brain dies and all of these crazy stories about when people's brains literally died and they had these out-of-body experiences. And I can say that my mother had something like that. So when she was um, giving birth to my sister, she had a C-section and they gave her too much anesthetic and her heart oh, stopped. Wow. And she absolutely – and my mother is not like a woo-woo spiritual woman right, at right, all, right. like not even close – and she absolutely, like, remembers floating through a tunnel, feeling super peaceful. Like, all of these benchmarks that they spoke about people who had these near-death experiences mm-hmm. have. Like, feel, floating through a tunnel, some kind of portal, um, being able to hear everything that's going on in the room, the sense of, like, peace and calm. She had all of those things. So um, I just found all of that to be so incredibly interesting. And I, and I really liked that first episode because it also – I liked the idea that, you know, when your brain is, you know, essentially dead, that you could still possibly hear because, you know, my father, he fell and he got a catastrophic brain bleed. That's what ended up killing him. And when we took him off life support, um, he was brain dead, but we were still talking to him. And even though, like, in my mind, I was like, well, he can't hear us. Like, his brain isn't functioning. There was a part of me that was like, maybe he can. Yeah. And so that kind of gave me some, some comfort there so I really liked that first episode and then I have to say the second episode I was kind of like oh, okay this is kind of stupid <laughs> the medium yeah like the medium and the ectoplasm I don't know what do you think of the second episode I was like yeah I think I felt like it. I kind of lost a, a little went in and out of that that one a little bit yeah. you know but the first one I really did enjoy and I think I like I maybe think of like maybe think of two things actually maybe think of the anesthesia mm-hmm. like where, where do we go when our anesthesia where's our brains yeah. in that moment yeah and it made me also think of ayahuasca mm-hmm. um, and going through those death-like experiences. Which I know you've you've done. Yeah. So, like, the, it made me think of those two things. Um, but it's really, really interesting. And it also made me think – I lost my father a long – a while ago. And, you know, being there and 
seeing how his face when you know when their faces go from um probably just unsure to almost like there was almost like a sweeping calmness over mm-hmm. them. So it was just really interesting to kind of piece those things together and listening to these people's story. Yeah. You know, especially the woman with the waterfall. Yeah. I was like, whoa, that's just crazy. Yeah. Feeling her bones break at the same time. Like, yeah. Just, that's insane. And she was like brain dead for like 30 minutes or yeah, she was, was underwater really, for 30 yeah, minutes. Really that was long. nuts. That's an, yeah. And she was a doctor, so I was like, okay, so. Yeah, I mean, they really, like, they, they definitely were very careful about the kind of people that they chose to interview. Yeah. And, like, you know, and, of course, the skeptical in me is watching this. Okay, okay like, she, because I think she's, like, a neurospine surgeon, so she's a very specialized field. Mm-hmm. And so I was kind of like, okay, even though she's a doctor, like, doctors can still, like, just talk shit. You know what yeah, I mean? Of like, they can still like, be we're, liars. Yeah, anybody can be human. So what I found <laughs> super interesting was that story about that woman, Pam, who had the aneurysm? Oh yeah, and they had to like yeah, yeah. stop her heart and like didn't and they she, have to like drain all of her blood? Yeah, they had to drain it out in order to drain the in, like that that to drain blood the sack aneurysm. or whatever. I don't even know what yeah. it is, but yeah. whatever it is, they had to drain her blood. I don't, I don't know, but it was like whatever it is, it's crazy. And then she was able to basically just say about everything that was in that room, yeah in the room. And she was like, and I also don't understand how she was brain dead for an hour. I think it was. Did they say fifty oh, minutes? Wow. I don't it was an enormous time. amount of time. Yeah. Um, obviously, there were some other things going on that kept her brain from dying off that they didn't explain in the episode. But um, yeah, she so she had this out-of-body experience, and she was able to like see everything and explain in detail the tools they used, where people were standing. And I think for that, what got me was when they interviewed the doctor, the surgeon who yeah. who performed on her, and he was like, I, I cannot explain. explain how she knew these things. Yeah. Because I was like, okay, what does he have to gain from this? Do you think that's part of consciousness? Or yeah. Subconsciousness? Maybe that's kind of – Like there's an area in there that we just cannot explain. That's what that one professor was saying. He you was know? like, sure, the brain dies. He's like, but what about consciousness? Yeah, that's you know, Like dead. that, we don't – we like, don't understand that. Yeah. And it's like one of those those things that, you know, that like that that sixth sense or something that we can't really explain. Like, you know how you f- you can feel it when someone's staring at you? Oh, you don't see thoughts them. Thoughts are things. If I have a thought, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I got to be careful. Yeah. Because <laughs> will, they will transpire somewhere along yeah. the way. So I make sure my thoughts are really, like, <laughs> precise and good. Yeah. <laughs> and if but I start even, to have a bad one, it's another Even thing. that one basic thing that, like, because uh, yeah. everyone's had that experience yeah. where, like, they feel someone staring at <gasps> them. You don't see them. So, like, there's no physical explanation as to why you know there's someone behind you staring at you, but you feel it. So what is that? Or, you, know? so, or you just know something's going to happen and then all yeah. of a sudden it does. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Some it's crazy con- shit. Yeah. It's some connectivity. It's some crazy shit. <laughs> We're plugged in. <laughs> um, what do you think our purpose on this planet is? <sighs> do we have a purpose? Or are we just, like, all, you know, trying to organize chaos? Is that like I what think life it could is? be a little bit of both of those things. I think also purposes, I think, might change throughout times as you go through, like, your these different life cycles, you know, mm-hmm. whether it's, like, you know, I think we go through different cycles, whether it's, a, like, I feel like I went through a six-year life cycle recently, mm-hmm. and it tapered off. So now I'm, like, re-entering another life cycle of mine. It's, mm-hmm. like, different long chapters or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think like each of those, the purpose changed, you know. So I think right now I'm trying to figure out what's my new purpose. Where am I going to go? Because like I expanded all this amount, yeah, cleared out all the stuff, this baggage. So now I'm like starting fresh and new. Now where do I go? Yeah. So I think my purpose changed. But do you know what I mean though? I'm because I'm thinking about it on a more general level. Like, is our purpose to be happy? Is our purpose to enjoy to other people? Is our purpose to like change the lives of this? of those of us, those around us is our, like, like, why are we here? (laughs) Why are you and I even here? TikTok. Why are we here? (laughs) Just kidding. There you go. That's what it is. Just admit lipstick on TikTok. I don't know. (laughs) Um, I guess on a general way, I think like, I don't know if there's just general one purpose. Like, I think you could, you know, live life um, to be happy. Um, I think like, let me reorganize my thoughts on that because what am I trying to say? It's a weird question, right? Because yeah, it, like what well, from it, what perspective too? Like yeah, from the perspective planet's you want to take? perspective, I could look at it as a way of you know my 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 purpose as a like singularity of my own and and taking it out of out of the world. But like 
maybe my purpose is just, you know, going through this life and, and figuring, you know, different things out mm -hmm. for me as a human being um, and what that happiness could be. Mm -hmm. And I think that does definitely changes. Um, I kind don't of like know. Life is like a puzzle and you have to like put it together. Yeah, we're putting it together throughout the whole time. I, that's why I'm having a heart. Like I can't just think of one purpose yeah. that my life has had. Yeah. You know, I think, you know, when you go through a bunch of different things, I think that those purposes change. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it's just to be happy either. Yeah. That seems kind of too hard. Although that's also something really, really great to achieve. Right. Because if you're happy, then that usually means that you're bringing happiness to other people. Mm -hmm. So then it, is it to affect the lives around you in a positive way. And and then in that sense, that could be different for everybody. For an artist, it could be to create great art. For, you know, a mother or a father, it could be to raise, you know, children who feel loved. For a scientist, it could be to cure cancer. Yeah. And I think the more aligned you are with whatever that is for you, yeah. I think that's lifting your vibration and that's what's vibrating out and attracting whatever into your yeah. life. And, then, you know, they say that the key to happiness um, – because, you know, that's the one thing that I think everyone's searching for, right? We're all, like, literally all we want is to be happy. Now, the way that we go about it is different for it's everybody different, yeah. and often misdirected. Um, but the one that really resonated with me was, uh, I forget his name, but he said that generally human beings are happiest when they feel they have a purpose. Yeah. Like, we're like, you know, we, we, we are we are human be we're human beings that are doing, even though they say don't be a human doing, be a human being. But do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, guess, like we want to feel like we're contributing to. But is that coming something. from an ego? Because are we like is our ego just saying that we have to contribute to something to be important? Yeah, I don't know. You know, I mean, we should like, be contributing something somehow, right? Even if again, it's yeah. just bringing happiness and joy to like your friends and people around I, you. Yeah, I, I think like you shouldn't be like sucking. No, like I don't think out of the world. <laughs> hopefully not. Hopefully not. We're being vampires to one another. That'd be horrible. But I also feel like if you're on, like if you're just if you're getting more aligned and you're radiating that, you're going to bring happiness to other people. Yeah. You know, if you're controlling and you are going to be that vampire, you've chosen that side to do mm -hmm. that, and so you're going to you know limit yourself that way. Yeah. Um. But oh shoot, what was I going to say? I just completely brain farted. Sorry. Well, <laughs> we can um, – I know that we have to wrap this up on the soonish side. Oh, no, we're good. We got to, Wait, no, we're not. We have five minutes. Eight minutes. Ernie, we have eight minutes. You said we have eight minutes. I can come back. <laughs> so now that, now that we have eight minutes, let's talk about like a very um, – very this is a very serious subject um what is your ideal how did you know i wasn't gonna be serious i can tell <laughs> what is your ideal penis size I just because you know size. people are gonna be like what's all this existential talk I about know. like when are they gonna talk about dicks here we are we're talking about dicks alexis what do you think about well, dicks? the key to happiness of a nice day <laughs> <laughs> the purpose of my life is dick size <laughs> it's your cock raider I got to tell you, um, let's see, perfect size. I don't know, like, really size-wise, but, like, uh, you know, nothing that's too big or too small, mm. to be honest. Because, like, too big, I'm only going to be able to do that every so often. Like your like – your, uh, Pray for my badge tomorrow. Tomorrow with Dread, <laughs> yes. who we love. I love him dearly. We, everyone loves Dread. <laughs> but your vagina might be like, can we only well, love him, like, once, once every couple months? Once every five years, apparently. That's where I'm going for right now. Um <laughs> Shit. But uh, I forgot he was going to say right now. Oh, oh your perfect, perfect penis size. size. Jeez. <laughs> Cut on dread. I totally forgot. You know, just something that fits nice. Uh, definitely probably bigger than six inches. Mm -hmm. um, smaller than 10, maybe. <laughs> That's a fucking big range. <laughs> I don't know. Seven to nine? Okay, seven to eight? I don't know. A... I don't think. Anyway, this Look, four, I'm this so four used to like, like that think, much, it's like anywhere between, somewhere between there. You know what it is? I think I get so much porn dick. I don't yeah. even know what like what is the average dick out yeah, there. Yeah, that's true. You're definitely not. Um, you're not dealing with average dicks on a daily basis. No, and I'm like, you know, I've been single for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you know, I'm, I'm I'm happy to get a worm once in a while. <laughs> that's not on camera. I'm like, oh, what are we gonna do here? What is this? 
I mean, why do you think that, you know, we were talking earlier about how, you know, we talked earlier about Dredd, and, you know, Dredd's been on my podcast. If you guys haven't seen the interview, go check it out, because it's, it's great. He's so lovely. Um, but, you know, that podcast did insanely well, and my audience is 96, 98% men. So generally, male performers don't perform terribly well on my show. They usually get much lower The only numbers. time they don't perform well? I know. <laughs> The only time they they have to talk. Oh shit! <laughs> Sorry, guy. Can I just bust my dick out? Yeah, yeah, hey, for I, me. Yeah. <laughs> that, oh my god! But Dread did like so well. It's one of like my top episodes. Like people are just crazy about him, and it's just so interesting to me that people are so obsessed with his dick. And I just think like it must mean. I think it means more to men and women because yeah. like society in general, we're so obsessed with penis size than just like you know. The, the insertion situation and satisfying a woman, it seems to suggest like power and virility and like, yeah, it's, it's, I've seen a lot of penises come yeah. my way, mm. um, whether it was <laughs> invited in the, uh, on the OF or, yeah. <laughs> or unsolicited, unsolicited on my Twitter. Dicks. Thanks yeah. buddy. Um, I've seen a lot of dicks and I don't know why, um, I don't know. And is it just, and something I gotta wonder, is it just an American culture that's obsessed with dicks? Or is it like obsessed with dicks all around, all, all over the place? But yeah, dick size is I think just it's so, everywhere. I think it's everywhere. Such a like obsession. And I've seen all sorts, like really tiny, like, you know, micro penis with huge fucking balls. And it's like, and they have like these huge cum loads. And you're like, oh my God. And then you'll have a massive size dick with a small set of balls and like, you know, watery, like where's that cum load? <laughs> Jesus, dude, maybe leave that fucking thing alone. Get some, get some zinc and eat it a banana, buddy. <laughs> that was not impressive. <laughs> I would not expect would... a large set of balls with a micro penis. Oh, right? sometimes. Yeah. I would even have them like wrap their balls up around their little micro penis and like, you know, do you get a lot it. of like micro penis? Oh, like, I get all sorts. Ratings? I get like, you know, um, well, I get all sorts. You know, I yeah. have a lot of – I have all sorts. I have my sissy boys and – So the micro penises, do you generally find that – sorry, I don't know why I'm obsessed with this topic. Um, Do They're you cute. generally <laughs> find that that those guys, like, are looking for SMH, like, small penis humiliation? Or do they – Majority, I find. Are they – okay. So it's so interesting. Majority, I think they do get off on that. I mean, I think they've taken um their dick and they're like, okay, this is what's going to get me off. Yeah. You know, maybe that was their first exposure to sexual yeah. pleasure with somebody, you know, yeah. humiliating them in some sense. And that just clicked off in their head. Yeah. You know, like sometimes that their first, sometimes people's first sexual experiences or experiences can mm-hmm. influence what their fetishes may be later on. I think. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a psychologist. Don't quote me on that. But like yeah. from what I've seen, I just feel like, you know, when I start talking and I've had fa- fans, you know, some of my fans have been with me. For now, almost um, 12 years, 12 and a half years. He'll be 13 in July. Wow. Um, And they were memory from all sorts, Bang Bros days, all that stuff. But, yeah, the micro penis with the big balls is always exciting. Um, (laughs) With all shapes and sizes. They're all all worthy of love. Oh, they are. They are. (laughs) They all adore them. So much love. Maybe your purpose in life is to just love all the penis. You know, I, you know, thinking about it, like I was thinking about, I do think about purpose of life, you know, here and there, and um, or when I'm by myself. But I think like sometimes my purpose in life is I provide a very safe, safe space and a happy place for people. Mm-hmm. Um, especially, I feel like when they come over to my house, mm-hmm. um, people learn to relax they can feel be themselves my fans across the line my my cucks my my sissy boys Mm -hmm. all those guys they feel comfortable to share their fetish with me Mm -hmm. um or my friends feel comfortable you know relaxing at my house and they can (sighs) let go and if that's my purpose to provide that for people where they can kind of uh engage in their own healing process Mm -hmm. And, and realize that they have that within themselves, yeah. then let that be my purpose. This is such a great topic, and I know we don't really have time to go into it, but yeah, I love talking to sex workers about how the therapeutic benefits um, that they often provide for people who, you know, a lot of people have sexual hangups because we're so like, we stigmatize that conversation mm. so yeah. much. Um, and sex workers are like, you know, the one people that guys know aren't going to judge them for the most part unless they want them to unless if you yeah. want them to judge your penis they will and then there's that conversation 125 but 
if you just want to feel good about your dick, we could we could do that do too. That too. <laughs> like we could do whatever you want. <laughs> um, I think there is something with that. I think we provide that safe space for people to be themselves and you know try on panties mm-hmm. and dance around and 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 really be whoever they want to be at that yeah. you know, particular moment. And and it's kind of sad that they haven't been able to feel that comfortable with the people that they love or mm. the people that are in their life that love them yeah you know that they feel that fearfulness is still there yeah. you know and if i can recommend not only just communication but comprehension has to be on the other side of that you can't just communicate and have great communication if yeah. you can't listen either yeah that's so true you know so both of those go hand in hand so right and left hand you can't yeah you can do really well with one yeah <laughs> But you love to have two. <laughs> a lot more to grab onto. So yeah, I, I love that. I, I really love I really love the space that I'm able to create for my fans. I, I love the space that I'm able to create for my friends friends, my mm-hmm. business, my business uh, friendships and relationships out there as well. Yeah. And I just would like to improve on that. And improving on that is really just improving on myself. Yeah. Well, Alexis, thank you so much for coming by. <laughs> Always such a pleasure. I know we could talk for so much longer, so we'll just, we'll just have to do this again. Okay. Twist my arm. <laughs> I will come here and talk to you anytime. Oh I love God, it. I you're, love you're, it. I love being around you. Oh, thank you. Me mm-hmm. too. <laughs> Hugs. Can you tell everyone where you can they can find you online? <laughs> yes. You can find me on Instagram, Alexis Fox Live. Twitter, Alexis Fox. My, um, my OnlyFans, Fox Fans. And uh, oh, my my TikTok is now Plant Mom A Fox. <laughs> oh my God, how many TikToks have you been through? Actually, this is just one, but I was so disappointed because like I actually took the time to do it, and I was like, like okay, let me try to do these TikToks every day. And uh, then everyone knew, and I thought it was doing good, but you know, they just take it without any. Yeah, indication. Any indication or anybody to be like, well, could we talk about this photo yeah. or talk? What what yeah. about this is why you took it down? So I don't have do it again. I'm yeah. fine with playing people with people's rules. Yeah, just have you just them need across, to know what they yeah, are. Just need to know what they are. Yeah. They're not very clear because if I see A over here doing it and minds me and take it down, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. So be clear and concise with your rules, and I'm happy to play them. Yeah. Fuck you, TikTok. But you can find me on TikTok. <laughs> At Holly Randall Unfiltered, if I'm still there by this time this episode comes out. I say this all the time. I know, right? We you all just know never know. Like. Um, at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. Just go to hollylinks.com. You can find all of my social media links. And, of course, patreon.com slash Unfiltered to support the show. Thank you guys so much for being here. See you next week. Yay.